And this is a woman, Eleanor Williams, aged 22, who uh, claims she was raped by several men as part of a grooming gang and was the victim of that grooming gang, has now been convicted of perverting the course of justice. Uh, Eleanor Williams published pictures of her injuries, horrible, horrible facial and other injuries, and an account of being groomed, trafficked and beaten in a viral Facebook post back in May 2020. The post was shared more than 100,000 times. It also gained the attention of the former EDL founder, Tommy Robinson, who led protests in her hometown of Barrow and Furness in Cumbria. However, it all emerged later that her story was entirely fiction and that she had injured herself by smashing herself in the face with a hammer. Well, yesterday, a jury at Preston Crown Court found uh, Eleanor Williams guilty of eight counts of doing acts tending and intended to pervert the course of justice. However, not only did she make up those lies uh, and cause uh, so much wasting police time, she also ruined the lives of men who she, whose names she just plucked from thin air uh, to make these horrible accusations against them. Let's talk about this with Marilyn Halls. She's Chief Executive of Freedom From Abuse and joins us. Good morning to you, Marilyn. Morning, Julia. How are you? I'm very well indeed. Lovely to speak to you. Now, look, you have done such magnificent work in helping genuine victims of this abuse. There are thousands, let's be honest, probably tens of thousands over the years of victims of these uh, these grooming gangs. Uh, it's a particular form of, of trafficking and, and organised rape uh, by uh, by these horrible men um, that we've been focusing on, thank finally, at long last. Um, when someone makes a false claim about abuse or rape, as this woman has done, it does an awful lot of damage to those who are genuine victims. Not only does it also do an awful lot of damage to those poor men falsely accused of such a heinous crime, it makes it so much harder for genuine victims to come forward, doesn't it? Well, it's outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. She's obviously a deeply disturbed woman, let's be honest. I mean, that's true, but she yeah. has done no favours whatsoever. It's bad enough anyway for women who have been raped to be heard to be believed to be yeah. understood even in this day and age you wouldn't think so but it is and it will just it just fuels those people that yeah. deny what women go through yeah. and i would like her to see a very hefty sentence and i've been saying for a long time the damage that these when anybody i mean these false claims are so rare but when it yeah. happens the impact is huge and i would like her to get a sentence that matches what those men would have got had it been true. Yeah, well, that's an interesting point. I've, I've interviewed a number of men over the years in my journalistic career who have been falsely accused and proven to be in court or you know, clearly exonerated uh, to have been falsely accused of, of these crimes. And it is, I mean, you know, other than murdering somebody, it's the worst thing that could happen. And, and people are falsely accused of child abuse as well. But we do, and it, it does too much damage. And that's the thing, these that allegations, they don't just damage the, 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 the innocent men who've been yeah. accused of these. But again, they also damage the, as you say, the genuine victims and we saw in the case of a lot of these victims of grooming gangs um that when they came forward not only was a situation where you had you know social services and the police and local councillors not just in rosamond rochdale but in pretty much every town and city across the country again and again and it's still happening now refusing oh, sure. to get involved because oh it was and let's not let's stop using asian Pakistani men, and men of Pakistani heritage, is vast majority a particular attitude from some particular men from a particular culture um, having an attitude towards particularly white working class girls. So it wasn't just this idea, oh well we don't want to stir up any racial issues, um, let's all be politically correct but it's also, these girls were told by the police, they were told by those in, who yes. were working in care homes, yes. that they were making it up and that they frankly they were just sluts, they were and just it, sluts, they weren't on, actually victims. It still goes on today and whatever police officer you talk to it's a lottery mm -hmm. it's a lottery according to the constabulary under which you are it depends on how dedicated the, the certain police officer is and I have sat with women that have been through this and and when they get it right the police they get it very right but women coming along like this it is absolutely shocking and it really knocks back progress a good five years where people that want to see there you go women tell lies and yeah. and that feeds certain uh mindsets and she as i say i would love to see her get a hefty sentence also she needs some serious help um, she's obviously I mean, she hit exactly. Not only did she do this, I mean, she hit herself in the camp. The, the, the pictures were absolutely horrific of what she did. It is. But what, what, what motivates? Do, do we have any research into what motivates people to lie about this? Because what we mostly do with what you're mostly dealing with in your charity is dealing with with girls and women, and of course, you know, boys and men are also victims of these things, that, yeah. that actually 
they they don't come well, we have the opposite problem they don't come forward and tell they often feel that they are somehow to blame they feel that, quite rightly a lot of the time they won't be believed um so what would motivate someone to make up these false claims is it is it attention seeking is it often just I mean, mental health problems it, it will go right back to her childhood there will be a brokenness in her childhood that it, it caused for and it could be yes a, a sort of perverted need for attention but anyone that can smack themselves in the face with a hammer yeah you, you, your average self-harming is cutting and that's bad enough or eating disorders is bad enough but to do what she did to herself as a, a real almost inner hate a, a hatred of herself somehow um it's so distorted it, it's so complex yeah. but there it's... are some deep issues there and it will as always go down to those early years of childhood what was her life like in the first three yeah. four years of her life you won't get away with it you can't get away from that it's always and his case isn't it goes. can i just ask you just finally in terms of dealing with you know the Rochdale, rotherham issues i mean again we, we it's not it wasn't just two towns it wasn't yeah. just in the past it's still going on now are we any better at making sure that perpetrators are caught and brought to justice and that victims are Pre well, preventing victims and helping them at the earliest opportunity because p uh, police officers I know saying that they are still facing exactly the same difficulties trying to bring these people to court. But, but they are. I mean, when you, you see sometimes when police have done an extraordinary bust and you think, wow, well done you, you've just swept up 24 men, whatever, and, and that's great, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. And this exploitation is in every single town across the length and breadth of this country and if you see the kids hanging around dumped in uh, bus shelters just you know what are they doing there why and people aren't asking the questions and when i go around towns whenever i go i travel all over the country with my job and i'm always looking what's that teenager doing there are they all yeah. right people don't want to ask the questions they want to live in their bubble they just yeah. want to keep like this and they don't want to see it and it is everywhere taxi drivers hotels should be trained everybody should be trained you know they're in schools the exploited children are in schools some of the children are exploiting other children because they're already in the gangs and i remember Anne longfield when she was children's minister children's commissioner saying she believed a member of an exploitation gang was in every single school in the country and i think yeah. she's right they know yeah they know exactly they, they, they were working in the care homes, so we know the paedophiles, we know, they know exactly what they're doing. And here's a clue, you know, what we saw with Rosamund Rochdale, when 14-year-old girls are turning up in, in A&E uh, seeking uh, abortions uh, and the like, uh, with their with their uh, their boyfriend who's 30 years old, boyfriend, <laughs> inverted commas, 30, 40 years older than them, uh, maybe that should be a bit of a red flag to you. Uh, thank you very much, Marilyn Hoyes, you do fantastic work, great to talk to you, Chief Executive of Freedom From Abuse.